Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Frank from Tested. And Frank, these guys were just released. Awesome. The Oculus Touch motion controllers for the Oculus Rift VR headset. Now I know something you've been really excited about is getting your hands in these. Yes. To sculpt. Yes, I want to sculpt in virtual reality. And Oculus has a tool called Oculus Medium that they've been developing and working with sculptors to show the potential of sculpting in VR. Now, you got your hands on this and tried it for a little bit. Yeah. What did you think so far? I'm hooked. I want to play more. You want to play more. But someone who's actually been playing a lot more already is our friend Dominic Quek. Yeah. He's a sculptor who works in the video game industry, and he's been part of the Oculus Medium beta program, yep. has had many weeks of using this in Oculus Medium, and so we invited him to your shop yep. to give us a sculpting demo. We're going to sit down and chat with him about sculpting in VR. Alrighty, uh, Dominic, thank you so much for coming in and uh, doing a digital VR sculpture for us in Oculus Medium. You've been using this for a little bit, for a while now, beta testing it, right? Yes, yes, I have, and so far the experience has been really, really amazing. So uh, before we get started talking about what you're sculpting right now, can you give us a little background uh, about what you typically sculpt with, what your experience is as a sculptor? Yeah, sure. So um, I've been in the industry, the CG industry, for almost 13 to 14 years now. I, the stuff I do is mostly digital sculpting for games, movie, film, collectibles. And um, right now, the main tool that most digital sculptors use is ZBrush and Mudbox, right? So it's really interesting to see um, Oculus take a stab at digital sculpting because now you can do it in VR. Right, so uh, I, I guess uh, first things first, like ZBrush is your primary tool of choice mm -hmm. um, and you're comfortable in ZBrush, but that's a, a 2D medium. You're looking at, I imagine you're using your computer monitor, using just keyboard and mouse for ZBrush or do you use a stylus? Uh, I use a Wacom tablet. Mm. Do you use a, the Cintiq or do you? No, use... I actually, yeah, I, I'm actually one of those artists who don't like the Cintiq. I've never gotten used to it. I'm more comfortable with the, with the tablet, pen and tablet. Oh, that's um, interesting because with the pen and tablet, mm -hmm. you're not directly touching with your tool onto the image you're, you're manipulating, you're sculpting. Yet in VR, you are, you have this direct one to one yeah. relationship with your sculpture. Do you have any background in physical sculpting, practical sculpting? I've done some practical sculpting but only like very casual you know i'm not a not an expert at it um i've always been a digital guy and i think the reason why i i caught on to vr sculpting so easily is because the way the user interfaces with the program is is vr is virtual reality so when you're actually sculpting on the model it's very different from putting your pen on a cintiq you know you're actually affecting the model in vr and you, and you get that feedback which is it's really unreal. It's, it's, it's intuitive. Yes, yes, it's extremely mm. intuitive. Um, so what about the tool sets? Uh, because you know, Oculus Medium has, you know, the tools you're using, you're adding stuff, you're subtracting things. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Can you describe what the tools you're using right now, how you're using the tools, and maybe how they compare to the tools you're used to in ZBrush? Right. Um, so the tools that Medium has, uh, they are very similar to ZBrush, right? So a lot of digital sculptors are going to pick this up really easily. Um, a couple of tools I use are the, uh, the Smooth Brush, you know, I do the Clay Brush. And right now I'm actually using the Clay Brush, I'm adding some detail, right? And I, I can see like right now the tip of that brush on the right hand, mm -hmm. when it's red, you're subtracting. Yeah. And when it's green, you're adding. And you're flipping between those super quickly. Yeah. Adding, subtracting, adding, subtracting, smoothing, going back and forth. Yeah, it's just a matter of double double tapping um, a button and that lets you quickly switch between subtracting and, mm. and adding. Uh, Frank, I know when you talk about sculpting, you talk about symmetry for like heads being really important. And well, I, th I think that there's there's a level of asymmetry that's important. Like they, you know, uh, two sides of a face shouldn't be mirrored. They should be like kind of similar. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And that is one of the, the downfalls of digital is that if you want to be quick, you have to use symmetry and then you got to go back in and break that symmetry. Right. So there are a few sculptors who actually sculpt without symmetry and it shows, you know, um, it definitely looks more natural. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, it's just another process. What most um, digital artists do is they sculpt with symmetry and then they break it afterwards. Ah, so what are the forms you're doing right now? Uh, I imagine you had something already in your head that you wanted to sculpt when you started this? Yeah, uh, so right now I'm just uh, basically trying to block in the primary forms. I'm using a lot of the inflate brush, you know, that lets me inflate um, big forms really quickly. And the great thing about VR is I'm always constantly rotating the model and it feels as though I'm grabbing it with my left controller. You know, I can just go forward and pick it up. I can zoom out, you know, look at it from far. And um, let's see what I'm doing over here. Yeah, I can tell you're, you're it looks like you're scaling as opposed yes, to zooming. Yes, you're, yes. you're making it smaller. Like, uh, Frank, I know when we, we have you do some sculpting, you sculpt and you take a step back, you take a picture mm -hmm. of your sculpture and... Can you see, is that there an analog to that when you're putting things in digital space further away and up close? Well, I, I think in the in the digital space, it'll be different than what I'm used to doing in person. Because like when I take a photo of it, I'm not, it's almost like you're not looking at it through your own eyes. Um, and, I, you know, it's almost like I wish that in the digital realm, you could look at it in the mirror, mm -hmm. you know. Because then you're looking at it in a way that you, you haven't been staring at it in a way. Right. So if there was a way you could like click on it to just like mirror it and look at it like mm. that would almost be equivalent to to what i try to do when i'm sculpting in, in real life mm, interesting um dominic what are you doing right now okay so right now i'm, I'm actually going to create the tentacles so the inspiration for this design is like cthulhu right um and i'm going to use the clay brush and i'm going to start creating tentacles and there's this taper feature on the clay brush which is really cool it basically tapers off towards the end and I can adjust the feather speed so it tapers off faster. Right? And then uh, I can quickly I create forms like that. You know, and I'm doing this all in uh, 3D space. Is, is that pressure sensitive? Um, it is to a certain extent. Uh, so it's like because the trigger that you're yeah, using yeah, to activate it's, it, it's an analog trigger. So the more you press in, like, are you letting go and that's exactly, what tapers exactly. off? Exactly, okay. And then the, the feather speed controls how fast it tapers off. Got so it, I, got it. If you look at how I'm creating um, those shapes, I'm basically just tapping the trigger and then dragging my brush. I'm not actually holding onto the trigger. It's just tapping and then letting the, the feather happen. Oh, so it's not a one-to-one -one pressure sensitivity where you can control the, you can like pulse it, you know, but by... by Depressing the trigger, releasing and depressing. Not, not for the clay brush, as far as I, I, I'm aware of. Is is that a hardware thing on this? Like, are the, are the I think it's a software thing. I think it's just a matter of time before you know they add more features. And that's that's the great thing about this. This is just the first version, and it's already awesome. Right. So you can only imagine where it's gonna go from here. Yeah. So, Frank, when you sculpt physically, you know, you take clay and or whatever material, and you're adding material on and on, and then you're combining them. Um, how, how, when you look at this, like, what do you think in terms of how, how you would go? Would you start from a big block and reduce it, or would you, you know, add and add and add and then refine and smooth? Well, there, there's always either an additive or subtractive, you know, when you're sculpting in clay. The, the thing that's really awesome about this is that it still has that sort of feel that you're sculpting in real life, but you could like flip the, the model around and look at it upside down. Like, it's really kind of hard to do that when you're sculpting like on a mm -hmm, life caster mm -hmm. with a chunk of clay, you can't really like, you know, rotate it as, um, as dexterously as you can. Right. Here. right. Manipulating it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like a weightless object, but it, it like projects mass cause it looks voluminous. Mm -hmm. Um, very cool. So, uh, you have the clay tool, which is your primary tool. And I know in medium, you can have that clay tool be a sphere, uh, or any type of other primitive shapes. Uh, it looks like you're using mostly the sphere here, Dominic. Yes, uh, there's a whole bunch of um, primitives you can use. You can, you can even import your own. Um, um, you can create a shape within Medium and then make that a clay brush. Uh -huh. So you can easily create a library of like shapes that you use a lot. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, but for you, uh, is the sphere the one? That yeah, you're most I mean with? the sphere is the one. The, the sphere for the clay brush gives me a lot of control. Um, especially for organic work. Is that your go-to in ZBrush as well as Medium? Um, ZBrush, I actually use a clay brush, which is sort of like similar, I guess. You know, it's the same thing. I, I mean, at the end of the day, the principles were digital sculpting and 
traditional are actually all the same. You know, you build primary forms and then you use tools that give you a rough look, right? So you can get those shit, those shapes quicker. So the same thing in, in medium as well, right? I If you saw what I did earlier in this video, what I'm doing is actually capturing the overall shapes and then working on the secondary detail. Mm. And in terms of detail, um, you know, how happy are you with the the amount of control, the precision and the resolution of the image? Like how small can you pick apart uh, the sculpture? Uh, you can add a lot of resolution. And I think I, I do it later in this video and, and I'll, I'll show you guys when I do. Um, you can actually increase the resolution of this model. So what you want to do is block out the primary forms as you would with traditional sculpting. And then once you're satisfied with the primary forms, that's when you increase the resolution that's going to um, add more polygons to your model and then you can start detailing. So if you look at what I'm doing right now, it's still very blobby, but that's fine because all I want to do now is just capture big forms. Mm -hmm. And then later on, you'll see me um, increasing the resolution and then adding more detail. Is there an analog for that in working with clay or physical mediums? Um, I mean, yeah, you start with big, big blobs of clay and then you, you know, either whittle it down or, you know, add littler pieces. Like, mm. I guess it's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's the same principles. Um, the thing that, uh, I'm kind of curious about is mm -hmm. now, have you used this as like a, a gesture study and then taken it into a more like advanced program like ZBrush and then like, you know, gotten in there and, and made it super crazy, you know, detailed, mm -hmm. um, or have you just just messed around with it inside this environment. I have taken models out of medium into ZBrush to add more detail. Um, and it's, to me, it feels like medium could be an all-in-one program given time. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just dep it's, it really depends on how you want to work, I guess. You know, some, I've seen some artists who have been able to do amazing work with medium. Um, and it's great for that because at the end of the day, I think medium does a very good job of creating forms in VR and and you've never had that ever in the history of digital sculpting and this is the first time you're seeing 3D forms generated in VR but currently would that workflow be practical it would be extremely applicable actually I, I would be more curious to see like with how the film industry is is, is becoming like are we going to start seeing films in VR if right. we are then why why wouldn't directors want to review designs in VR yeah, you know. I mean, I, I don't know if you follow Landis Fields um, from over at ILM. He's yeah. been doing a lot of this stuff lately. I've, mm -hmm. been, I've been watching his stuff. Um, he does a lot of like biomechanical stuff. How do you feel about this in terms of like hard surface? Um, it's great for designing stuff in hard surface, but I, I think it's still, um, it's still not at a stage where you can create very clean geometry for production work. But as a design tool, it's really fast. So, so gesturative. Yes, yes. Just like if you want to create like a ve vehicle, for example, you can do it really quick, quickly in this because they have primitives, they have hard surface shapes that you can play with and, and it's super quick. Mm. So at this point of the sculpture, what are you doing? I saw you just almost expanded the back of your character's head. Yeah, I was using the smudge tool and that lets you quickly pull out forms. And I use the smudge tool um, together with the inflate tool and like just, you know, just slowly building up form. And I'm very being very subtle with this, right? adding forms using the inflate tool and I'm establishing the, that neck, right? And again, this is the smudge tool. Um, again, adding more form to the back, creating more of that neck and that trapezius and then smoothing it out again. And I'm being very selective with my strokes, right? And I think um, the more experienced sculptors, they'll, you'll see them pick this up really quickly because at the end of the day, it's about your knowledge of anatomy, right? you could get a lot done with very little strokes. And, and that's what I'm, I'm, I'm referring to about this program. It's so intuitive. People that have done digital sculpting, they're going to pick this up really, really quickly. Mm. Is that also the sense you get? I know you've had a little bit of time in this, Frank. Yeah, I, you know, I spent, I don't know, what, about a half an hour messing around on this. But it's, it's way, for me, it's way more intuitive to use this, you know, than to design a 3D object right. on a 2D surface on a computer screen. Right. Um, you know, to be able to kind of tilt your head and look around. Yeah. What What was the first thing that, that got you when, when you put on that headset? Uh, for, for sculpting? Yeah. The, the fact that I could look around the <laughs> object. Like when, you know, when when I've tried to, to learn ZBrush or, uh -huh. or Maya or any of those things, like 
I'm designing a two a three dimensional object on a two dimensional surface, which is for me it's still kind of counterintuitive. Like I'm just not used to it. But this, it was like I instantly got it. Mm-hmm. Like because you could look around the whole thing and you can and you're using your hands. Yeah, so yeah. to say it, right? Well, you're using your hands in a very similar way to how I would do it in the real life. Right. Um, so I, th- I'm, I'm curious to see how traditional sculptors like me are going to be able to take to 3D sculpt, uh, digital sculpting with tools like this. Like, is there going to be a big influx on, you know, of super talented people that haven't made that jump to digital? Yeah, is, is it fair to say that with any 2D sculpting tool, there's the camera tool, which is one thing to learn, and then also then the actual sculpting tools, which is another thing to learn. And in medium, it seems like the camera tool is 100% intuitive. Anyone can become the camera because it's just your head. And all you're then really learning and adapting to is the controls for your sculpting tools. Well, I think these sculpting tools are also a lot more intuitive. Like ZBrush and Mudbox and Maya, those things are like super complicated programs. There's so many tools and so many things that you need to know just to start like moving around in there. Like, um, yeah, and I th- think I think the guys at Oculus they they made a conscious effort to make the tools as familiar as possible, especially for traditional guys, um, and that's why on on the first look, the tools there isn't a lot of tools, right? But within each tool, there are options that you can expand upon, mm-hmm. right? There are settings that you can dive deeper into. A good example is a clay brush. You know, if you think about the clay brush, you you, you mentioned that I use the sphere a lot, right? But there are a bunch of other tools you could use. And some of these tools, they actually mimic actual sculpting tools. Like you could create a shape that's like a rake, yeah. right? You could create a, a, a pinpoint shape that's sort of like a needle, right? So there's really a lot of ways you could, could go about sculpting in medium. Yeah, it feels like the people who made this tool understood digital sculpting and practical sculpting and real sculpting. Um, as a sculptor digitally... Do you walk around? I mean, what's your physical real world setup when you're sculpting in this, Dominic? Uh, I'm just sitting down in front of my monitor and I'm not really moving a lot. So actually working in medium has encouraged me to get up, you know, look around my model. And and um, it's really, it's a, it's a very different approach, especially with being able to sculpt big and then being able to sculpt small. Um, and w- what I mean by that is, is I'm able to scale my model big and then sculpt at it at that scale. You know, it feels like I'm working on a life-size statue. And with um, how we do it with digital sculpting, you you know, normally you would be just in front of your monitor. That doesn't give you a sense of scale, you know? Right. And right. for me, that's the biggest thing to take away from this experience is you can sculpt at any scale you want. You can work on it as if it was a resin kit. Right. Or you could sculpt it like it was a 20-foot giant. Yeah, if right. you're building something that's supposed to end up being a life-size costume, you can get the forms mm-hmm. down in one six scale and then blow it up, or the reverse. Exactly. But in the real world, are you actually still walking physically around? Because we see a lot of demos with Oculus Medium where the setups are such where the artists are encouraged to walk around, and we had you do this while well, walking around. But like, if you're going to spend an hour or two hours or three hours in this, ergonomically, what's been the most comfortable for I, you. I think the most comfortable you can stand or you can sit but I wouldn't be walking around the model I mean I would just grab the model like what I just did and just spin it because that just makes more sense mm-hmm. right why I mean you could walk around like, uh, it, it, it would it's a different feeling right if the model is there and you're walking around that gives you a different feedback as well I, I found myself like like moving my head to the back just side because of the you can right <laughs> well yeah I, I mean I'm used to looking on the back side like I'm not used to spinning the you know the sculpture right the same way so i i so, found yeah, it's myself looking around yeah it's interesting you say that because like that goes to show like the traditional sculptors will work with this in a different way you know they they are used to going around their sculpt the sculpture right yeah and use it used to the the whatever light source they have mm-hmm. in the real world being the light source and spinning the sculpture around and and being very hands-on i guess it's yeah really hands-on um but wait, wait what what are you doing here like uh, placing these little tentacles yeah How- so remember i told you about the clay brush what i did here was use a, sh- a specific shape to create that form right so that's actually the clay brush it's just a different shape mm-hmm. so i'm mm-hmm. using that i can create this tiny little um whiskers if you will and you can, you can see, see all those up and down. Yeah, and yeah, I can rotate them. Um, 
Oh, so you can rotate them, uh, skill them uh, within the without having to rotate the model. You yes. can just rotate the the primitive itself exactly on the right hand. Okay, that's cool. Because the sphere, if you rotate the sphere, it's it, yeah, it's going to be the same. Yeah. yeah, but if anything, it's a regular shape. You mm-hmm. like how you place it in your hand, like how you hold a pen. You want to be able to rotate that exactly. Um, what about uh, how much you want to move your hands? Because scale. Seeing something at one scale is, is, you know, perceptually interesting, but also how you, you know, whether you sculpt your wrist or your arms also makes a difference. Are you sculpting more at a small scale with your wrist with f- a fine finesse detail or more big arm movements? Right now, I'm actually using more of my um, wrists. And I think I, I, I'm doing that because I'm so used to sitting at my desk, you know, and I don't get a lot of space. But then I notice, like when I'm working on really tiny details, especially, um, it's really hard to to get that kind of accuracy with your wrist. So the cool thing about VR is you can actually scale up your model in VR, and then use broad strokes using your whole arm, you know, and that gives you a lot more control. Uh, and here, here I'm actually using the the flattened brush, you know, to sort of create a a bust. Oh, yeah. Ah, so you kind of it kind of squishes or cuts yeah. off right mm-hmm. at the end. Oh, interesting. I need I need to get this file and try printing this thing and see how how it comes out. Yeah, let's do it. Let's yeah, do I it. know because there's export tools here. You're saving and and yeah. I see you're being pretty diligent, Dominic, as you're sculpting here to go and save, mm-hmm. uh, you know, save the file. Um, but you can export them as OBJs. And you said you've done that before. Brought them in a ZBrush or brought them in other 3D modeling tools. Yep, yep. You can do all of that. Yeah, there you go. Quick save. Yeah. Now, do you find that when you save this stuff, like to to go to print? Is is the poly, is it a high enough poly count that it comes out looking like this or I think it's it's high enough poly count. Um yeah. I mean it's has what you see is what you get basically. Um and I uh, I'm not sure if you guys saw what I did just now. I actually increased the resolution of the model and oh, I did that okay. in the layers. Yes, yeah. So there are layers tools here. Yes. Uh, how would you use those? So basically how layers work is whenever you create a new object, you want to keep it on a separate layer. So if I were to add eyes, for instance, I want to make sure that those are on a, are on a separate layer. Um, that way you get, you know, your, your, your entire scene isn't messy or anything. Um, and you can merge layers, right? So what happens when you merge two layers together, it combines the mesh. So you could pretty much create an arm and then stick it into a body, merge those layers, and it will combine that. So you can sort of like sculpt in, in separate parts, right? And I know some sculptors actually work that way. You know, they cut off the arm, they detail the arm, and then they patch it back into the main body. Um, so just just a different way of working again. Very cool. Um, and what are you doing now, now that you've increased resolution? You're happy with your yeah. overall forms, and mm-hmm. now is it more about the details? Yeah, no, I'm... I'm Every time I'm working on detail, I'm also constantly looking at the entire shape, you know. And even after you've increased the resolution, it's still possible to create um, big form changes. And I'm doing that right now using the, the the inflate brush, I believe. Now, are there like texture stamps that you can apply on this or, or have they not? Um, texture stamps. I mean, you could use the clay brush as a texture stamp if you can get... Um, a geometry that allows you to do that. But like if you wanted to put like a skin pore texture or something like that on there, there's no tool or anything that you would have to either go in there and sculpt all the little pores or... There isn't a tool right now that does that, but if you create a a tool, a a piece of geometry that creates that skin texture and save it as a clay brush, you could essentially use it the same way. Ah, You know what I mean? It's just like how you... You guys do it with uh, traditional mm-hmm. sculpting. You guys have stencils, right? Is that what you guys call it? Um, well, I mean, there's a lot of times we end up sculpting all the pores. Right, right, hand. right. But this, <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing the like this, this pads that you can stamp and create like oh, pores. Yeah, like, yeah, and, like texture. And, yeah, the yeah. texture stamps. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Mm, but but uh, those stamps like they're not. There's no fabric material. Like, they're not bendable or anything. They're just gonna be rigid shapes. Yeah, they're, they're gonna be rigid shapes. So that's something to take note. And you can see, like, after I increase the resolution, right now I'm getting a lot more control with these fine wrinkles. Um, previously, I'm not able to do that. Um, and I'm using the clay brush, um, and then using that feather option to taper off the ends. And you can see me like smoothing off the ends as well. I noticed that you do like a your workflow is you know brush. 
clay brush smooth, clay brush smooth. Yeah. You're constantly going back there. Mm-hmm. Um, and those t- those two tools work really well hand in hand. Yes. And, and the cool thing about this is um, you can pick a secondary brush that that you can toggle to really quickly. And what I have now is clay brush as my primary tool and then using the smooth brush as a secondary. And it's just a matter of uh, pressing on the, the, uh, the trigger on the left controller. Oh. It lets you switch between the two really quickly. Very cool. Um, I noticed uh, on your Facebook page, you've done a lot of these kind of bus, creature bus. And, uh, but you've also done scenes, little diorama scenes mm-hmm. in Oculus Medium. How is that different than... Uh, the process different than when you do something like this? Um, it's it's largely the same. I guess the only thing you have to be aware of is just having a good sense of scale because when you're working with environments, it's different, you know? And, and it's kind of trippy because you can scale the environment so big that you're in that environment. So it, it brings another level of design. You know, right now you can create shapes that would look real to you in terms of scale. So that affects the way you design. So that was really intriguing, just just approaching um, environment design that way. Hmm. Wow. So uh, right, right now, uh, how complete is this and how, how much more work into your head? This like, is, yeah, this is pretty, like in terms of design, it's more or less there. I'm just noodling in the details, you know, using the clay brush to add more wrinkles. And... Uh, yeah, overall, the design is there for me. I'm just picky. You know, I just want to add as much detail. Have you experimented with uh, non-organic designs? More Not mechanical really, designs? you know. Yeah, I, I know a couple of artists that do that really well. For me, I'm, I'm mostly an organic kind of guy, so I prefer monsters, creatures, stuff like that. Very cool. What do you think, Frank? I want to play on this more. <laughs> I want one of these for my shop so bad. <laughs> And then now it looks like Dominic, you're doing uh, the eyes. Yeah, here I'm actually debating whether to add eyes. And that's a, another good point to bring out, right? With with digital sculpting, you know, you can quickly add, see if it works. If it doesn't work, you know, just try something else, right? Undo, redo. Yeah, and I and I sort of realized here that, you know, sometimes a design is better when you, it doesn't have that many elements. So I decided to go with a, a look that doesn't have any eyes. And that's me toggling between layers. Oh. And I, I put the eyes on a separate layer, but then I I figured out later that I didn't want them. And you're swapping between the layers right now, doing mm-hmm. comparisons. So you, it's just like you know, like a Photoshop tool where you can yeah. see the layer, mm-hmm. activate it, exactly. hide it. Oh. Are there features that you still want in this that that you hope they will bring to Medium? Um, there are a couple of brushes that I I hope they do bring in. One would be a a move brush something that allows you to move um forms without destroying them that is my biggest um um concern right now because i guess for the traditional sculptors they don't really have an issue with that because you you can't do that right yeah yeah, yeah. but for zbrush users you want that move tool that move brush so they haven't added that um but who knows, man? You know those those guys. They are very receptive to feedback. And do they have uh, masking tools on this? They do not have a masking tool. Ah, so that's another one that you. Would that would be yeah. Right? That would be a nice addition. So now, if, have you have you mm-hmm. tried coloring any of your stuff on here? I have, um, and it's a pity I didn't get a chance to show you. But you can actually paint in here, and and you have a lot of control. You can have um, a hard brush, or you can have a soft brush. Various colors. You can even control the materials. You can add an emissive material to let to make it glow. Oh. Uh, yeah, you can add a metallic material for hard surface designs, you know, and you can control the specularity properties. And that's all applied either through like an airbrush or paintbrush. Yes. Uh, but you can't do, I mean, you use layers to kind of mask, um, to, to block off areas. Um, layers is mostly for placing objects. There isn't any masking features now. And that's why I said, like, if you want to give different parts of your model different materials, it's better to have them as separate objects. Mm. You can't give, like, more than one material to to a single object. But you can give multiple colors. It's just like painting, right? You can paint blue, green, or whatever on a single geometry. Now, one of the things that's a big promise of VR is social. 
um, the ability to collaborate with people. And I know that's not something that people normally typically expect out of sculpting tools, but in the digital space, but in the physical space, people collaborate on sculptures all the time. Is that something you guys would want to see in a tool like Medium? You know, multiple people in VR working on the same model or the ability to share models and work on them collaboratively somehow? That would be interesting. I Honestly, I, I haven't seen um, any community that has done that to a degree of success. It'd be hard. Like, who's controlling who's, who's spinning right. the model? Right, exactly. Right, like Then you'd have to have a static model, yeah. and then maybe you grow yourself. But and you, you're, you're, you as a brush grows big and small. You know what I can see happening, though? I can see people contrib contributing assets. So they could create building blocks. They could sculpt an arm. They could sculpt a hand. They could sculpt heads. And you could sort of like Legos, right? You can build your own creature, or build your own monster, or your own robot. Yeah, a library of primitives. Exactly. For, for that clay brush. That would be, that would be very cool. Um, ergonomically uh the touch controllers here they they f they feel like you, you know you don't see your hands but they're the contour to your hands and uh, you haven't had any fatigue problems how's what's the longest you've used this um the longest i've probably about three hours and making sure to take a break every hour um the controllers are fine i, I don't really get any fatigue with using the controllers and they have a nice um strap and at at first, I didn't use the strap. And then there was this one day when I realized that you should use a strap because I was making very big strokes. And I was like doing it really quickly and the controller actually flew out of my hand. And then that was when I realized, oh, okay, so that's why they have those straps there so that, you know, make sure you don't don't now, throw them. When you're when you're sculpting for your for your day job, do you take breaks every hour? You said that, you know, you were taking breaks every yeah, hour. Yeah, I mean, same like if you're... Walking in front of a monitor, you want to take a break every 45 minutes, you know, look somewhere far away. So it's sort of like the same thing with VR sculpting. You just want to take a break from the headset. Um, I, I know people who have done it for longer stretches of time, but for me, um, two to three hours is, is pretty good. Taking, taking a short break every 50 minutes for a few minutes, you know. Um, yeah. And, and Frank, I know you mentioned earlier, like seeing it from a different perspective, like when you take a photo, is interesting. What if there would be the ability to sculpt in VR, take off the headset, and then continue to work on it on 2D on your desktop in high resolution on like, you know, a big 4K monitor or something, and then put the headset back on, you know, a combination of those tools would, I think, be interesting too. Well, I, I mean, I always think that it's it's going to end up being the right tool for the right job. Um, but, you know, this, this just makes it, for a traditional sculptor like mm -hmm. me, more intuitive um, than, than on a computer. Yeah, Dominic, is this a medium tool you're going to continue using even outside the beta? Absolutely. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I mean, just being able to generate forms so quickly, that's the biggest draw for me, you know? Um, and then being able to see this in VR, right? It's just insane. Yeah, and it's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your sculpture with us. This is awesome. Uh, where can people find more of your sculptures and your work? Uh, just go to my website at dquack.com. That's D Q W E K dot com. I have um, all my artwork up there. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you. That was pretty awesome. Dominic is awesome. Uh, while he was sculpting for that half an hour, we were just hovering in the background, yeah. peering, and I could like see looking around at the computer, like gears turning in your head. Yeah. What was going through your head? What What do you think as a sculptor about this tool? Well, I'm I'm really amateur at using ZBrush and Maya and all those things. Like I, that's not really my medium. I'm you know a traditional sculptor, but watching his workflow makes so much more sense. And now I want to use this more, and I want to get better at it because as this technology develops this is gonna become more advanced, and if we could start playing with it now, I'm gonna be, it's, it's gonna be more natural for me. So I wanna use it more. So we're gonna let Frank use it more, and let us know if you'd like to see Frank learn sculpting in VR and watch some of those videos in the future. You'll find more VR coverage and sculpting coverage, the world's combining, yes. on Tested in the future. See you next time.